South Park has earned a strong reputation for producing content in quick succession. The collective talent behind the scenes allows for an episode to be completed in less than a week. Oh no! Kind of fishy! <laughs> This was shown off in the phenomenal documentary Six Days to Air, which can be located on the Season 15 DVD box set. Looking at some of the culturally relevant topics the show has dealt with, the subject of mobile gaming and freemium apps is one of my personal favourites. What does freemium mean in context of mobile phone games? Freemium! The meum is Latin for not really. Yeah, that's not the definition. A blend of words, or portmanteau if you will, the definition of freemium derives from merging the words free and premium. For an online business model, a basic service is provided free of charge, but with the option to pay for more advanced features. Essentially, this makes something repetitively stupid seem fun, but only if you pay the premium. Applying this to mobile apps, this is where South Park approached the concept in the Season 18 episode, Freemium Isn't Free. Written by Trey Parker, the episode originally aired on November 5th, 2014. With freemium mobile apps still being produced, the topic still remains relevant. At the time, creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone have been approached by several mobile game developers with the idea to create a mobile app with the freemium concept. This would have likely led to using the South Park franchise for a game similar to the likes of The Simpsons Tapped Out or Family Guy The Quest for Stuff. In the Season 18 DVD commentary, Trey and Matt Matt discuss how they viewed this concept. This began with how ignorant they were to the moral obligations that surrounded freemium gaming. We actually did like a shitload of research for this show. And actually the guy, uh, Jordan, who we had worked with on the South Park game, he was the first guy to say to me, you know, well, there's some ethical kind of issues with freemium games, and I just really didn't understand what he, what he meant. Upon researching for their own personal interests, a longtime friend, Jordan Thomas, thankfully got involved by steering them in the right direction. Thomas collaborated on both the Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butthole video games. He pointed out the differences between the good and bad types of freemium, where these ideas went on to fuel the vocal opinions expressed within the episode. Episode. Looking at the apps categorized as bad, the best examples are ironically sourced from competing adult animated TV shows, The Simpsons, Family Guy, and even Futurama. All of these games are very similar with a tedious structure. Each game begins with a sudden act of destruction. Whether it be a nuclear disaster, chicken fight, or the lustful romance between two cross-dimensional toads. <laughs> With the world in ruin, the player is tasked with monotonously rebuilding the familiar locations. This is designed to be an elongated process where the player faces paywalls, meaningless incentives, and waiting. It's a surefire way to make lots of money! With a large portion of the budget likely spent on animating an introduction, the gameplay is a rinse and repeat process stealing valuable hours of life. Designed to ensure the enjoyment is capped, the player is constrained by paywalls and provoked into spending their hard-earned money to remove these restrictions. Material value is non-existent in these games where the average person is tricked by a virtual reward. There is a sense of irony with the release of South Park Phone Destroyer, a mobile game which began in 2017. Although this app does have paywalls and pay-to-win features, it tries to balance this with the end user's experience. In short, the end user does not need to make any purchases for the game to be fun. And with this in mind, I like how the release of this app demonstrates the significant difference between what is arguably good and bad in freemium mobile gaming. I found this South Park episode to be an eye-opening experience for its focus on how these apps are designed and the effect that they can have on the player. This can be understood from the struggles of the end user along with the surreal behind-the-scenes depiction of app developers. Beginning the episode at South Park Elementary, Jimmy approaches Kyle and blatantly advertises the new Terrence and Philip mobile game. He makes a confident pitch explaining why he should be playing it under the guise of it's free and therefore fun. There's a new Terrence and Philip mobile game. You should download it to your phone right now. If it's free, why wouldn't you? Kyle begrudgingly agrees as we cut to him and Butters sitting outside and playing the game. It successfully replicates the source material with a clear visual satire of other freemium games. Using Terence and Philip as a recognisable franchise within the show, the user can collect Canadian coins to unlock a virtual reward and rebuild Canada. Does this sound familiar? This takes advantage of the same story techniques we have seen from previous freemium apps. It also shows that in order to gain more coins, you need to spend real money on the fictional currency. 
Kyle acknowledges that the game is stupid and lacks any form of entertainment. What advantage does playing the game really have if it isn't fun? Clearly, the app is made with the intent to finance the developers, which is exactly where the plot is going. With a jump cut to an establishing shot of the Canadian Department of Mobile Gaming, this next scene is a stunning piece of informative satire. The dialogue exchange sees Terence and Philip who are outraged about the mobile game and how they are being exploited for profit. Confronting the Prince of Canada and a new character, the Minister of Mobile Gaming, they express their distaste for the app. They describe it as dumb and that it's evidently not free. It's the dumbest game ever! They see through the charade. Acknowledging this, the Minister reveals the science behind Micropay Freemium Gaming. Terence and Philip, and in turn the audience, are briefly schooled on how freemium mobile games work. I really like the comparison between contemporary video games, drawing a fine line between how games traditionally worked and how adding Micropay transactions changes this formula. Quite literally lifting the curtain on their manipulative plan, the Minister shares his in-depth knowledge of the gaming industry which makes the plot feel all the more surreal. He is deliberately only selling the positives behind freemium games. In turn, this is also being sold to the audience where we can understand the negative connotations from a consumer standpoint. It is obvious that profit is the main goal behind the Terence and Philip mobile app. I like how some of the background illustrations reference the currency used in The Simpsons and Family Guy games using donuts and clams. Overwhelmed with information, Terence and Philip suddenly detract from their moral principles. So this is... everyone is doing this? Everyone is doing it! The pair are reassured the game is harmless, and seeing how much money it has made, they each accept a check for a cut of the profits. It's the way things are going! This is where the concept of addiction is brought up in relation to Stan Marsh, where he spends $489 on the fictional Canadian coins. It makes perfect sense to use Stan for this storyline, especially when looking at episodes such as Bloody Mary and how addiction appears to have plagued the Marsh family. This is further reinforced using Stan's grandfather, who also has an addictive personality. Randy is convinced these addiction tendencies are evil and corrupt, thinking literal demons have been passed down to Stan. With Randy speculating on this out loud, there is a sense of irony where he refuses to acknowledge his own struggle with alcoholism. I had a problem, but I was able to stop. Now I only drink gluten-free beer and wine. Addiction is further explored when Stan has a sick day and stays off school just to waste his time playing the freemium app. The boys then discover that Jimmy is responsible for pushing the game onto other people on behalf of the Canadian government. When confronted, he reveals that his own personal addiction was the reason behind doing this. How could you sell out your friends? I needed the money, all right? It can be argued that most freemium players will act like Kyle and Cartman in this instance, where they dismiss the game before getting heavily involved. Only a small percentage of players are likely to spend real money on the game, which is the niche demographic the developers are arguably looking to manipulate. I really appreciate how pragmatic this episode becomes, showing how spending only a little bit of money from each user may seem small. In the long term, however, this adds up to an enormous amount of profit. Terence and Philip challenge the minister, expressing their disillusioned feelings on freemium apps. They share their mutual concerns about how some users may start spending money they do not have and how this could become harmful to certain people. Acknowledging the dangers behind addiction, the minister appeases these concerns and agrees to use some of the profit to set up support programs. This would supposedly teach people to moderate their time spent playing the game. I really like how this episode goes on to compare freemium apps to alcoholism and gambling. This is satirised by an abrupt sequence of non-animated footage showing what fun means. Drink, 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 drink it all, you fucking pussy! More tuxedos, more cars, more pussy, more vodka, drink, drink, drink! With Trey Parker literally screaming the voiceover, I love how it ends with an anticlimactic message of please drink responsibly, which is encouraged by genuine advertising campaigns for the alcohol industry. The minister is upfront with Terence and Philip revealing his plans to manipulate the world with their mobile app. Selectively, the Canadian government has therefore chosen to take advantage of people easily influenced by addiction tendencies.
tendencies. This point is reinforced when looking at Jimmy and his own personal struggles. App triggers are also part of the addiction process. By sending a notification to the player, this provokes them into coming back even if they are trying to avoid it. Showing this in action, Stan is in bed trying to ignore his phone where he succeeds until the app provides him with 5,000 Canadian coins free of charge. This incentive is enough for him to continue playing and therefore spend more money. Looking at three generations of the Marsh family, we see how Grandpa Marsh struggles to recognize his gambling addiction as a problem. Similar to Randy's alcoholism, he too is in complete denial but sees that both Grandpa and Stan have a problem. He tries to show Stan the monotony of doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results is not fun, which fails to sink in. Grandpa defends himself and just like Stan, describes his addiction as harmless fun. Where alcohol and gambling is readily available, so is the Terence and Philip app, and likewise can still be avoided. This is where the episode creates an argument in favour of self-control being the issue. Is the problem with the user, or that something is made too easily available, causing harm disguised as fun? Looking to answer this question, the scene where Stan reaches the realisation that he has lost control is one of the best. He finally admits that he may need help showing remorse for his actions, as Jimmy comforts him. This is where he is advised to reach out to a higher power, which is usually interpreted as putting your life in the hands of faith. We've seen this before in episodes again, such as Bloody Mary, where Randy is encouraged to reach out to God for help with his drinking problem. Exposing the app developers, the boys get the word out to the masses that the Canadian government is manipulating people with addiction problems. Terence and Philip are disgusted by this behaviour who once again confront the Minister of Mobile Gaming. He shows no remorse for his actions, where he doubles down on building the ultimate addiction machine. It doesn't matter if vulnerable users are taken advantage of, that was his whole point. By taking advantage of those who struggle with addiction, this extracts the most amount of money because the end user cannot control their actions. Okay, I need help. Opening up to a higher power, Stan says a prayer before bed only to summon Satan, the Prince of Temptation. Physically embodying representations of evil, I love how the writers juxtapose this characteristic by making Satan arguably one of the most relatable figures in the entire show. He isn't necessarily an evil being, but he is an overseer of evil. I always found him to be oddly compassionate, showing an emotional complexity where he comes off as approachable and extremely helpful. Stan asks for help in understanding addiction demons, where Satan comforts him in almost a fatherly way. Discussing the scientific method in which the brain releases dopamine, he begins to understand that there is nothing spiritually wrong with him. By doing something too often, such as playing the freemium app, this causes a dopamine imbalance where you can struggle to recognise enjoyment from something you are doing frequently. With mankind being spoiled and having free access to anything they may desire, this goes on to reinforce the argument of self-control. Satan points out that moderation is key to the enjoyment of what we consume. In order to provide a balance, the concept of temptation is available, which becomes part of our own free will and how we choose to spend our time. The attic people said something about me filling a hole. Well, who's not filling a fucking hole? When the minister finally snaps, this is where he reveals his true identity as the Canadian devil, which was completely unexpected. I'm the Canadian devil! <laughs> When Satan notices the freemium game, he immediately recognises the work of Beelzeboot. This angers him where temptation is supposed to be nuanced and not blatantly sold. Borrowing Stan's soul, Satan possesses his body and makes his way over to Canada. Wrapping the sequence, this was one of my favourite one-liners from Randy. Told you, kids got demons. With Canada now absorbed in a fiery cloud, the Canadian Devil takes ownership of all the Canadian souls thanks to a deal signed by the Prince of Canada. Torturing him, along with Terence and Philip, Satan bursts into the room initiating a glorified fight sequence of unholy superpowers. Although the ending is abrupt, I like how it removes the need for the fight sequence to play out in fall. Instead, this shot quick cuts to the boys playing basketball where Stan emerges from a satanic pit. Without even questioning this, Kyle asks him if everything's okay and he positively responds. Yeah, yeah I think I'm gonna be okay. 
Stan has conquered his addiction demons by quite literally challenging temptation. I really appreciate this episode for its broad representation of addiction. It shows us the psychological symptoms upon withdrawal, such as changes in behaviour for Stan and Jimmy. Seeing Stan alienate himself from close friends was a clear sign of struggling, only for the Prince of Temptation himself to be a rational source of comfort. Bringing back Satan was a fantastic move, a character we had not seen on the show since 2006. His appearance was foreshadowed by Randy early in the episode who refers to addiction tendencies as demons, which arguably sets up the conclusion. Overall, this episode of South Park is one I would highly recommend. By utilising mobile apps, it provides a relatable subject matter for something easily accessible. Moderation is key to enjoying something that should be fun, which is the message I am sure we can all appreciate. That's going to do it for this episode of Animation Preservation, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments, have you ever played a freemium game? Did you succumb to the temptation of spending real money? Money, 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 money. For more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?